Born with an unyielding determination and fueled by an unwavering passion, he emerged as a true racing prodigy, captivating the world with his unparalleled skill and relentless pursuit of greatness. This is the story of Jackie Stewart, from his extraordinary feats on the track to his groundbreaking contributions to safety. His indomitable spirit and charismatic personality make him a part of the most excellent drivers of all time. A legend even today who raced in a time where Formula 1 was more dangerous than ever, where he could see his best friends die on the track alongside him. But first, let's go to the very beginning. Jackie Stewart was born on June 11th, 1939. He was born into a family of car dealers and racing enthusiasts. His father and brother were involved in racing and their successful business set the foundation for his passion. Despite facing an undiagnosed dyslexia and the challenges it posed in his education, Jackie attended local schools until the age of 16. He then embarked on an apprenticeship as a mechanic in his father's garage, setting the stage for his remarkable journey in the world of motorsport. His first car was a light green Austin A30, which he purchased shortly before his 17th birthday. He then later took up an offer from a customer of the family business to test a number of his cars at a nearby track. For several years, he tested these cars, rising through the ranks and even winning at Goodwood in 1962, which further propelled his career. Ken Tyrell, who was managing the Formula Junior team for the Cooper Car Company, learned about Jackie Stewart through Goodwood's track manager and contacted his brother to inquire if Jackie would be interested in a tryout. Jackie Stewart accepted the invitation and arrived at Goodwood for a test session. He took over a new and highly competitive Formula 3 car, which Bruce McLaren was also testing. Stewart impressed by consistently outperforming McLaren's lap times, which led to Ken Tyrell offering him a spot in the team. From the beginning, you could already see his skill, as he made a dominant debut in wet conditions, taking a commanding lead and winning the race by a huge margin. Despite receiving an offer to drive in Formula 1 for Cooper shortly after, he chose to gain more experience under Tyrell's guidance. Stewart went on to become the Formula 3 champion, winning all races except for two due to mechanical issues. He also impressed Colin Chapman and Jim Clark during a trial in a Lotus F1 car, but opted to join the Lotus Formula 2 team instead. In his F2 debut, he finished second at the very challenging circuit in France. Although he signed with BRM for the 1965 season, he first raced for Lotus to replace the injured Jim Clark at the non-championship Rand Grand Prix, where he claimed pole position, won the second heat, and set the fastest lap. It was obvious he had something special and he was finally ready to race in the top of motorsport. In his first round at the start of the 1965 season, he drove to finish 6th in a race dominated by Jim Clark, claiming a point in a solid race. Fortunately for him, in his second race at the Monaco Grand Prix, he put in an impressive performance to take 3rd place for a podium finish. That same season, he also achieved a significant milestone by winning his first race at Monza. The thrilling race saw him engage in intense battles with his teammate Graham Hill for the lead, and in the end, edging him out to win. Stewart's debut season was highly successful, marked by one victory and four podium finishes. These impressive results earned him a commendable third place in the World's Drivers' Championship that year, but the best was yet to come. In the season of 1966, Stewart experienced a disappointing year following his promising start in the previous season. He managed to secure a victory at the opening race in Monaco, an outstanding performance considering the circumstances. However, in the 1966 Belgian Grand Prix, a crash would change Jackie Stewart's life, and of many others, forever. While driving at a high speed of 165 miles per hour during heavy rain, Stewart had a severe accident. He collided with a telephone pole and a shed before finally coming to a stop inside a farmer's outbuilding. The impact trapped his leg due to the steering column and the fuel tanks in his car ruptured, filling the cockpit with fuel. Unfortunately, there were no track crews or appropriate tools available to rescue him. Therefore, fellow drivers Graham Hill and Bob Runderund, 
who had already crashed nearby, came to his aid. However, the track lacked the medical facilities or doctors, so Stuart was placed in the bed of a pickup truck until an ambulance arrived. The first aid center at the track was not well maintained, and he had to wait on a stretcher amidst a floor covered in cigarette butts and other debris. Eventually, another ambulance picked him up but the driver got lost while driving to the hospital. Finally, Stuart was flown back to the UK for treatment in a private jet. Following his crash at Spa, Stuart became a vocal advocate for enhancing safety in motor racing. He expressed his desire for his legacy in the sport to be associated with improvements and safety measures, as he even had to hire a private doctor. He joined forces with the team boss of BRM to campaign for better emergency services and the implementation of proper safety barriers at racetracks. They highlighted the alarming lack of crash barriers in front of the pits and the hazardous presence of fuel containers in the pit lane as he found such conditions to be absurd and called for significant changes to ensure the safety of drivers and pit crews. In the rest of that season, BRM had a very unreliable car, in which he constantly retired due to mechanical problems. In the following year, it was the same story, except even worse. In the 1967 season, he only finished an outstanding two races of the 11 that season, since the BRM had such an unreliable car. Although, the best result of the season was a second place finish at the Belgian Grand Prix, where he drove one-handed while holding the car in a gear with the other. Despite a very frustrating season, he would finally fight at the top in the next year. In the 1st of January 1968, Formula One would roar its engines to life on the Kyalami circuit in South Africa. The Lotus duo, Jim Clark and Graham Hill, looked to have the season in their hands as they qualified first and second for the race, with Jackie Stewart only managing third. Then, in the race, into the first corner, Jackie Stewart managed to take the lead and kept it for a lap until being re-overtaken by Clark a lap later. Graham Hill, who had lost many positions at the start, finally caught up and overtook Stewart, remaking the original grid order. Then, later, Jackie retired from a connecting rod failure. Things didn't look bright for Jackie's hope of a title, as the duo of Clark and Graham Hill looked too strong. That was until a tragic event would change everything. On the 7th of April 1968, during a Formula 2 race, Jim Clark would tragically lose his life at the wheel when crashing into the trees at Hockenheim. Jackie had just lost his hero, his best friend, and was devastated. This made his highlight on safety even more evident as he called the safety regulations at the time diabolical. Although, this also changed the playing field for that season, as Jackie would finally have a chance at competing for the title with Graham Hill. Although, in a Formula 2 race shortly after, Jackie Stewart also suffered a crash in F2 at Jarama, breaking his wrist and missing the three races after. Then, in his return at Belgium, he qualified in second, and a bunch of retirements in the race saw him overtaking Danny Holm for the lead of the race, only until he ran out of fuel on the penultimate lap, handing over the win to the McLaren team, who claimed their first ever victory that day. As you can see, things didn't look so good for Jackie. He wasn't even in the top 5 in the standings, with Graham Hill having a 21 point lead over him. Though, Stewart would put up a huge title comeback, starting in the Dutch Grand Prix. He would take a dominant win by over a minute and a half that weekend, with Graham Hill having an accident in the closing stages. Not long after in the French Grand Prix, Jochen Rindt would outqualify Stewart for pole position, but at the beginning of the race, they both got overtaken by Jackie Ix. And after a fuel leak in Rindt's car, Jackie Stewart claimed third place with Graham Hill once again suffering from mechanical trouble. The next race would be the same story, with Graham Hill once again suffering from a half shaft failure with Jackie claiming 6th. Now, it was time to race at the Nürburgring, Formula 1's most deadly track. The conditions were treacherous, and the qualifying was even worse, with Stewart qualifying in 6th and finishing a whopping 50 seconds behind the pole sitter Jackie Ix. In a treacherous race with challenging conditions, 200,000 spectators witnessed a dominant performance by the Scott. Despite Graham Hill initially taking the lead, Stewart quickly surpassed him on the first lap and built a substantial 9 second advantage.
Utilizing his superior wet tires, Stewart extended his lead to 34 seconds by the end of the second lap. By the race's conclusion, after 14 laps, Stewart crossed the finish line over 4 minutes ahead of the second place finisher, Hill. This race was what defined Jackie Stewart, fearless and determined. Despite the horrid conditions at a track often called the Green Hell, he delivered an incredible performance to do the best wet weather drive in Formula 1 history. Moving on to the Italian Grand Prix, it was disappointing for both Stewart and Graham Hill, as they both retired due to a mechanical problem, with the race being won by Denny Holm who won the championship the previous year. Then, in the Canadian Grand Prix, Denny Holm would once again win the race, with Hill and Stewart claiming 1 and 3 points respectively. And at the penultimate round in Watkins Glen, New York, Stewart won the race, with Graham Hill in second behind him. This meant that Jackie was only 3 points behind him at the final race in Mexico, and the championship hopes were high. In the lead up to the race, there were 3 contenders for the championship title, Graham Hill, Jackie Stewart, and Denny Holm. Graham Hill with 39 points had a few paths to victory. He needed to secure a podium finish with Stewart finishing 2nd or lower, or a 6th place finish would be enough if Holm finished 2nd or lower and Stewart 4th or lower. Jackie Stewart, with 36 points, had to come in 1st to secure the championship. If he finished 2nd, Holm had to be 3rd or lower and Hill 4th or lower. Or if he finished 3rd, Holm had to be 2nd or lower and Hill 6th or lower. Finally, Danny Holm with 33 points needed to win the race with Hill finishing 4th or lower. Already at the beginning of the race, Holm's dreams were quickly crushed as his McLaren encountered a disastrous setback when its rear suspension broke, causing a horrible crash. The unfortunate turn of events left Holm's championship aspiration in ashes. As the race unfolded, Joe Sifford took the lead, showcasing his prowess on the track. But fate had other plans, as Sefer was forced to make an unexpected pit stop due to a broken throttle cable. Meanwhile, Jackie Stewart, another contender for the championship, faced his own challenges. His engine began to misfire, causing his car's handling to deteriorate, and a fuel feed problem added to his problems. Then, Stewart unfortunately experienced an engine problem with his Matra, causing him to plummet to 7th place. Amidst the chaos, Graham Hill emerged as a beacon of triumph. With skill and determination, he conquered the race, claiming victory and securing his second driver's championship. Despite the disappointment and devastation, Jackie Stewart's spirit remained unbroken. The setback served as a fuel for his determination and ignited a fire within him to come back stronger than ever. Stewart, known for his resilience and unwavering commitment, used the experience as a catalyst to grow and improve. Undeterred by the setback, Stewart vowed to return to the track with renewed strength, was ready to showcase his unwavering passion and emerge as an even greater force to be reckoned with in the world of motorsports. In the next year, he showcased his dominance in the races, demonstrating complete superiority over his competitors. He achieved remarkable victories, including winning by a margin of over two laps at Spain, leading by a minute at Clement Farad, and securing a lead of more than a lap at Silverstone. Alongside triumphs at Kyalami, Xandvor, and Monza, Stewart ultimately became the world champion. Notably, Stewart led at least one lap in every race of that year, a feat unmatched by any other driver. He also had a big scare when Graham Hill suffered a huge crash at the United States Grand Prix, but fortunately for him, everything was okay. But then, in 1970, he would once again lose one of his best friends at the wheel, Jakin Rindt. He tragically passed away at the Italian Grand Prix, but had a commanding lead in the championship by then. In order for Jackie to be able to win the title, he had to get nearly perfect results. While he tried his best, the Tyrell car had other thoughts, and he retired from all the races following the incident. Nonetheless, Jackie was devastated of the loss, but was also happy for Rent, who was able to secure the championship at least after death. Finally, in 1971, he once again dominated the championship, winning most of the races that year and proving to all his skill. The next year, he would finish runner-up to the dominant Emerson Fittipaldi, but once again in 1973, he dominated again. Being so ahead, he won the title early and finally decided to retire due to a fatal crash at practice of the United States Grand Prix. While he retired at the peak of his career, he had already proven everything he had to do. 
After his racing career was over, he was often involved in activities off the track. He was an advisor for driver safety and helped improve barrier safety and make the track safer to race on. He also appeared on multiple movies and was an icon in the pit lane, being active and commentating in different activities. Then, in 1997, Jackie Stewart returned to Formula 1 as a team owner, establishing Stewart Grand Prix in partnership with his son. The team had its debut in the Australian Grand Prix. While their first year yielded limited success, the subsequent year saw even fewer podium finishes and minimal points. However, after Ford acquired Cosworth in 1998, the team took a risk by developing a new engine for the 1999 season. The SF3 car proved consistently competitive, resulting in a victory at the European Grand Prix with Johnny Herbert and strong performances from Barrichello. Ford eventually acquired the team, which transformed into Jaguar Racing in 2000 before later becoming Red Bull in 2005. In recognition of his significant contributions to the world of motor racing, Jackie Stewart was honored with prestigious awards. In the 1971 birthday honors, he was appointed an officer of the Order of the British Empire. Then, in 2001, he received the knighthood of his remarkable services to motor racing. These accolades acknowledge Stewart's outstanding achievements and his enduring impact on the sport. In 2018, he established a charity race against dementia. This endeavor was deeply personal for Stewart, as his wife had been diagnosed with from temporal dementia in 2016 at the Mayo Clinic. Helen's condition had resulted in limited short-term memory, impaired mobility, and the need for constant care. Stewart firmly believes that the innovative technology and unconventional thinking prevalent in Formula One can contribute to finding earlier solutions for society in dealing with the challenges of dementia. And most recently, at the 2023 Miami Grand Prix, he was blocked by guards in the pit lane to get the attention of a famous tennis player for an interview. In conclusion, Jackie Stewart's life is an extraordinary tale of triumph, courage, and pioneering efforts in the realms of safety and racing. As a Formula 1 driver, he not only demonstrated exceptional skills and determination, but he also revolutionized the sport by prioritizing safety measures. Stewart's relentless advocacy for improved safety standards led to significant reforms that transformed Formula 1, making it safer for drivers and saving numerous lives in the process. His unwavering commitment to ensuring the well-being of his fellow drivers and pushing for innovative safety advancements remains a defining aspect of his legacy. His life serves as a testament to the transformative power of one individual's vision, determination, and passion. His commitment to safety, his pioneering spirit, and his unwavering pursuit of excellence have forever changed the landscape of motorsports and left an enduring legacy that continues to shape the sport and inspire generations to come. Hope you enjoyed! If you liked what you saw, please subscribe. You can also watch similar stories such as the story of Jim Clark and Jakin Rint, which you can watch on your screen right now. See you there!